Hi everyone, I've come back to site side. Um, I, I wasn't going to bring the camera, I was just going to have a relaxing bit of a camp with no filming and, and just enjoy it. But I've brought it anyway. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to put this online, I'll just see when I get home. But I've got the whole place to myself, makes a change, doesn't it? So I've got every single pitch to choose from. I'm gonna go up here anyway. I've got a mountain tent with me, the Mountain 25 by North Face. It's gonna be really warm. It weighs a ton, but it doesn't matter when you're just car camping. So I'm gonna take that up there. I haven't pitched this one for a while, so. It should be good, it's a good tent, I've got a good beer selection, hopefully I'm allowed to drink beer on this one, a few comments on the last video telling me off but such is, such is social media, the fun police are out in force, anyway, we get pitched up, this one's pitched in a first, it's obviously raining a little bit but we're just trying to get it up as quickly as we can. Weighs a ton. This is a bomb proof tent, proper four season mountain tent. They use this on the likes of Everest expeditions. Stands up to absolutely anything. So let's get the poles in and you'll see it take shape. In a tent set up. It's not as easy as the Hilleberg and doing that in wind with one ear would be a bit of a struggle just because of the way the poles are, but it's fully Fully geodesic design, Summit Series range, which is for extreme weather. Rear door. And the front door with venting options. All that's left to do now is, and the good thing is you can just pick it up, place it wherever you want. I just want to point out, I'm the only person here, so the whole place is free. I guarantee people are going to arrive here. I will either put the tent there or anywhere here when they've got the whole lower ground and the entire top section to choose from. I guarantee that's going to happen. Let, let's see how the day pans out. So that's it, pitched up, I've not done the guy lines because that's overkill, there's no strong winds forecast, like I say it's designed for the winds that you experience in proper harsh mountain environments and clearly it's not that here so it's a lot more involved in the Hilleberg that is much easier to set up but I just fancied well, I haven't actually camped out in this tent, in fact I didn't know how to tell a lie a couple of years ago um, but I just wanted a bit of extra warmth as you can see the fly sheet doesn't come all the way down to the floor on this one but I've made sure it's pulled out pegged out away from the inner it's a really strong tent um, I don't use it enough I'm gonna try and wait for some severe weather and get it out in a harsh environment and just see see how it holds up but suffice to say, that tent is not going to let you down in any weather. I get the rest of my bits in. Hopefully this rain's going to pass over. I don't know. I've got a few nice beers, some nice food to have, and um, some nice reading material. Nice book about the outdoors. I'm just going to relax, but first of all, I'll get the rest of the bits in the tent. So I'll just show you around this one. It's got a decent sized porch, big enough for cooking, loops to hang your lantern on, 
nice window to see out there. Double zipper on both sides. It can be open from the top or the bottom. I've just put my own ground sheet in there. It's got this massive circular entrance. Um, it's got loads of loops here for like, you can hang lines to dry your stuff when you're battening out the, the storm, sitting it out on the south core of Everest. You've got these generous mesh pockets, the whole width of the tent on either side. And you'll notice it's really bright, really airy. You've got more gear storage up there, gear loft. Same on this side. You can zip that panel down just for some venting or the entire door if you wish. It's got this bathtub in it with the, uh, the ground sheet. It's fully taped. It comes up really, really high. So in short, it's a bomb proof mountain tent, really warm, nice and pleasant inside. You can sit up in it, I'm six foot. Plenty of room, it's just luxury for one and that's what it's all about, this one for me. Absolute luxury. You've got these zippers here as well, just to, just to vent the inner and reduce condensation. I've got some snacks for a light lunch. I was going to head out on a walk, but I'm not sure. Got a new beer that I've seen, a Clute West Coast IPA. So I'm that warm. I can take this down jacket off. I'll have some sandwiches and I'll I'll try that beer. So if you remember it this time. It's for them cheap foil mats I was talking about. Just reflects the heat back into you. Three season Thermarest mat. And my Van Gogh sleeping bag. A nice comfy pillow. Because unlike wild camping, uh, <coughs> weight's not so much of a consideration on this one. So I can take some bulkier, more comfortable items. I'm hoping this rain goes off a little bit because I did want to go for a bit of a a little bit of a walk but if not I'll just go and get my book out of the car and just sit and read and relax. Just had a nice relax for about an hour and a half sitting listening to the sound of the rain and pondering life i've got um this mountain equipment pair of gloves which a good few years old they've lasted me well made out of polar tech material but there is a hole you might not be able to see it there it is so what i'm going to do is I'm going to just repair that, sew that hole up, and then I might head to the pub, sit by the fire, dry my clothing off. Um, you've got a good selection of walking and outdoor magazines in the pub there, so I think it makes sense to go and chill out in there for a bit. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to try out my sewing skills. I'm absolutely rubbish at sewing, I haven't got a clue. Um, but I'll have a go and we'll see what happens. Well, I'll never be a seamstress, but that ain't bad. There's no hole anymore and you can't really tell. 
to be fair so I'm judging that to be a success oh god one handed ah a slight patch of blue sky well as you can see the rain is off so I've got outside the tent and I'm taking in what I love about camping and being in the Lake District look at those views there that's right up into the cloud there is Dove Crag and hidden away is Priest's Hole Cave been there a couple of times you get wild campers in there the last time I went up there it was really dirty they left like loads of litter and stuff like that which wasn't good anyway beer wise I've got something a bit special here at MCM Outdoor Show we've always enjoyed a beer and it's got nothing to do with any other YouTube channels it's something we've always done I know that's a hard concept to grasp for some people anyway something a little bit special I found this look at that it's corked brasserie I'm trying to get it to focus brasserie de noir beer melesame dry hot beer it's in this brilliant bottle anyway there's not much information on it so I think the only thing left to do is toast the mountains really and try it so let's do that oh that was a faff getting the tripod from the car there's no one on the campsite so we can talk reasonably loud we've got some cork action this nice frosted glass bottle that's it see if we can fire the cork into outer space I'm going to go for a trajectory just to get it out of the Earth's orbit. Oh! And over the tenter. I will be picking it up, don't worry, and putting it in the bin. So we can tell there's a lot of carbonation in there. It smells like an abbey beer look at that that is special <coughs> terrible cough anyway yeah it's rich there's no messing around here to the mountains to the great outdoors to the fellow campers the fellow outdoors lovers and to positive futures that is really special it's very nice it's multi very multi I'm gonna have to bring you bring you a bit closer oh look at that there's people coming I've just started talking to a camera and there's a Mitsubishi LT pulling up. Maybe a Taze outdoors. Maybe he fancies a few beers. Just don't know. Clearly, I can't carry on talking to myself now, but it's just the way it is. You got that sorted there, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, I know, What's that? What is it? Oh, I don't know, it's just an oldie special, but... A wine? No, it's a no, beer. It's, oh, it's a beer? It's, it's a beer, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's serious stuff. What are you looking for? Watching? What's that? What are you watching? No, it's just like, just um, like YouTube. So we go wild camping and stuff, but just come for a chilled out one, say. So I'll have to put it away now, because I look really weird just sat here talking to myself. I could do it an hour ago, but it's going. <laughs> What's happened?
thing about this anorak I've got my wrap down jacket underneath so the sizes are really generous really generous sizing this is a medium and I've got a full winter a full winter wrap down jacket on underneath it hence the bit of a Michelin man look but that's what it's for it's not warm on its own albeit it stops the wind especially when you wax it but it's for layering it's your outer layer I really love it I've wanted one of these for years and I've been looking at it for a long long time and you only live once so there you go there's a bit of snow up on the tops there might spin your arm for a better look see what we can see look on tripod right up there the clouds just hanging a little bit lower but on that second outcrop that one if that cloud moves across it will start to reveal some ice and snow patches Collaborator series episode 2 coming soon as well. Place fell. Well, we spent a nice hour and a half in the warm. Coming back to the car, I'm gonna get some water. Might have another beer. And um, think about tea. We've got some hot dogs. I'm just keeping it simple. There's no Michelin star cooking here, to be honest. Nice and simple, hot dogs. And keep relaxing. That's what it's all about, just relaxing. Right, okie dokie. This is what we're doing for tea. Vintage Coleman exponent stove. And hot dogs. Gourmet recipe, whatever. Scraped bones. We have some rolls. And some Tommy K. So, cracking little beer selection in there as well. We're gonna get the stove sorted out and cook up these hot dogs.
really nice. Right, it's time for Tales from the Tent. I don't know how long this is going to go on for, but if you stay till the end, absolute respect to you, and let me know in the comments that you've you've listened to it all and quote some that I've said near the end and the middle and the beginning, so I know, but it's up to you. How I got into the great outdoors, what it means to me, and a little bit more on MCM Outdoor Show. <coughs> I'm the grand old age of 37 now, and from about, I was about the age of 12 or 13, I remember my dad and my uncle taking myself and Matt, Matthew, who's my cousin, um, who is in some of the videos, to like a tent fair, like an outdoor fair. And we got this old tent, well, it was brand new at the time. Uh, I can't think of the name, but uh, it was a massive, massive thing, weighed about a ton. And we had a couple of, couple of lads and dads camping trips in it. And I really, really enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved it that much that it's remained a part of my life. Um, for these 24, 25 years. Um, as I got a little bit older, my my dad and I joined a climbing club based in Liverpool. You might have heard that twang in my accent. I'm not a proper scouser and I don't profess to be, um, but I am from the general area. Um, so yeah, we, we joined this climbing club in Liverpool and they, well, we predominantly went out every other weekend and did a climb in Snowdonia. Proper ace group of fellas, we had a really good time. We used to go out in all seasons um, and it involved rope work. A couple of occasions I absolutely bricked it. We went to Coombe Idwell and climbed something called Chasm Face, which involved, oh, it's like, I, I don't know all the gradings in terms of rope climbs. I'm not, I'm not into that, but Christ alive, it was a tester to test our bottle for a Scotland trip, unbeknown to us at the time. And there was just like a vertical face, thousands of foot up in Coomid while in the middle of winter. And we were up on ropes and it was, I just remember it being terrifying. And there's a little section of it called the catwalk, which is a tiny, tiny little shelf cut out into the rock, thousands of feet looking down into Coomid well. And it was about a, it must have been about a 20 foot traverse over this tiny, tiny little ledge. Obviously there was someone up above us be laying, but it was still absolutely terrifying. And it's ingrained into my memory, one of the most scary times in my life. After we'd done that, there's a chimney into the rock. You can imagine an L shape. And the lower part of the L, we had to go in, this crack into the rock face itself, crawl on our backs. Um, horizontally and then make the transition from being horizontal with a rock face above your your face and there's water dripping down onto it. it was pitch black it was terrifying and then go up to the bend in the L and go from horizontal to vertical and then it was a case of bridging all the way up this crack onto the top of I think it was a, one of the glids as it comes out on glider far I think it was terrifying um, I remember when I got got to the top, I ended up getting pulled out of this chimney. This terrified teenager thinking, "What the hell is going on?" Um, we all we all got through it. It was pitch black. There was a lot of shouting and swearing, and you know, "What the hell am I doing here?" type scenario going on. But I remember coming back home, having a bath to defrost, and thinking. Wow, you know, I've just done that. And I couldn't believe it at the time because it was literally the scariest thing. I, I've genuinely felt the closest to death in my life. Um, and the sort of team spirit and the camaraderie and the banter. And it's like we'd survived this, this experience. And it sort of grew from that, really. Um, we used to go out most weekends up to Snowdonia, Crib Gok, um all over um all over north wales basically and it was really nice we did some epic climbs lovely bunch of men 
um, and we made some absolutely brilliant memories and then we uh, did a charity climb in Scotland in the Five Sisters of Kintail for the Roy Castle Lung Foundation in the middle of winter. We did the Five Sisters and came back down to the campsite, had a few beers and then we made our way to this pub. I can't remember the name of it. Um, somewhere around Kintail, very remote, proper Scottish inn. Is it the Clackaig or something like that? oak beams, cosy atmosphere and this guy came on playing the guitar and he had someone playing the tambourine and there was single malt flowing, the fires were roaring, it was the middle of winter, there was snow and ice outside and just absolutely brilliant memories again. Um, so we've had some absolutely brilliant times. Um, that kind of progressed into me and Walsh, he's been my mate uh, since school, basically all of school, we started with a group of lads going up to North Wales ourselves um, and started camping, taking a few beers um, and just enjoying the great outdoors and our love for the great outdoors was kind of cemented in those years really. So yeah, absolutely great times um, and then the older we've got we've obviously finished school, went to university um, while she did some physio, physio degree, and I did a geology and geography joint honours degree in, in Liverpool Uni. Predominantly picked because of my love of the outdoors and nature and the environment. And uh, there was field trips all over Europe, which was brilliant, um, including a spell in the Cantabrian Mountains, where I camped out in the Cantabrian Mountains for five weeks, a little tiny one-man tent, and made a geological map. Of, it was about three or four square kilometres of this Cant Cantabrian mountain range. Brilliant, no one spoke any English. Um, picked up Spanish, ended up buying a flamenco guitar. Teaching myself that, drinking locally produced Rioja, one euro a bottle on the campsite. And again, just making memories in the outdoors. Really, really good. And it's kind of grown from that. The trips have continued. We used to take pictures and little tiny videos on our phones. Um, but you know nothing serious and then fast forward to 2015 I decided to buy a GoPro a Hero 4 Silver and I, I decided to start filming the trips because I thought you were doing all these things and you know I'd like a way to store the memories basically and that's how the channel started um, purely as a way to store our memories so then I thought, well, why don't I put them on YouTube and, and see what happens from that. Fast forward to 2019 and it's been going for another year years and it's going strong. So that's where my love of the outdoors comes from. And that's a little a little update on, I don't know how, how I got here. But I find being outdoors really relaxing. I feel at home when I'm outdoors. I don't like built up environments. I don't like busy places. I don't like being stuck in traffic jams and stuck in traffic in queues and people bumping into you in the supermarket and I don't like that. I work a very, very busy, busy, hectic job and on my time off, in my time off, um, I like to be as far away from other people and I don't mean that in a horrible way. You know, I'm quite a social person. I'm quite pleasant. I'm happy to have a pint with people and chat and talk and... But if I can help it, you know, I just try and get away from it all on my days off. And that's it, really. That's uh, that's kind of how long have we been talking for there? Nine minutes. Jesus Christ. I can't be doing another 50 minute video. That I mean, that's horrendous. That's about it. There are plenty more things I've probably forgotten. Um, but it kind of kind of sums up what I love about the great outdoors. Um, and it remains a passion of mine and which is why I'm passionate about encouraging and other people to get out there and enjoy it and you know all the benefits it brings so I'm enjoy the rest of this sling it out stout um, unless unless I've got anything bizarre or random to say and I decide to drink every beer in here and start talking absolute nonsense I'll speak to you in the morning um, I'm no doubt I'll probably edit this video tomorrow 
get it on YouTube. I need to try and space it out a little bit. It's been a bit hectic over the past couple of weeks, but hey-ho. Anyway, I hope that's provided a bit of an insight into me a little bit more, a bit of my background and a bit about how I got to um, my current place in the outdoors. Thanks for listening and like I say, I'll know if you've listened to it all and absolute kudos for, for sticking that waffling tent, Tales from the Tent talk out. Morning folks, probably look like I've been run over because I feel like I've been run over. Really bad night's sleep, back pain, suffer from really bad lower back pain when I sleep on these air mattresses. If anyone's got any tips, please let me know, but you can't stay asleep for longer than a sort of an hour. Uh, the pain wakes you up, shift onto your other side, the pain starts again, then it wakes you up. Um, yeah, it's not pleasant. Um, and it's becoming a bit of an issue so uh, answers on a postcard please anyway time to get a brew on um, I just want to make sure this doesn't flare up so I'm going to open the door make sure that that's lit properly get a coffee on uh, and then I'll be heading off packing up so the weather's meant to become atrocious Right everyone, that's the end of this video. Um, I'm not even sure whether I'm going to upload it. I just come out for a bit of a camp, a bit of a relax, and um, I don't know whether there's any content worth putting on. Depends if you like tents and stuff like that, I suppose. But <coughs> if I, if I do put it on and you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, nevertheless, because it helps the channel. If you're on Facebook, look for MCM Outdoor Show. There's a page in a group. Come and join our group. Look for me on Twitter and I'll see you on the next adventure. I'm going to link in with Matt and Walshie and see what their availability is. Maybe a bit of a Christmas hammock camp. Um, so we'll see. Keep enjoying the great outdoors. My hashtag, write your own adventure. Just come out and do it. Give it a go. You know, get outside your front door, get off the sofa and go and enjoy yourself in the great outdoors and all the benefits that it brings. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the next one.